to make bubbles, you need two main ingredients. The first one is water, and the second one is soap, like washing up liquid that you use to clean the dishes with. I'm going to add a bit of soap to the water. Let's give this bubble mixture a try. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Can you see the way the bubbles come out of the wand? I think we should take a look at that with my special slow motion camera. Slow motion means that we can see things that happen really quickly much slower. So let's use it and see what it looks like when I blow air through the bubble mixture in the wand. Here it goes. Wow! Look how the bubble mixture stretches and then breaks off into a wobbly round bubble. Do you know what that round shape's called? That's right, it's called a sphere. Look at that lovely sphere-shaped bubble. <laughs> but do you know how soap and water make bubbles and why bubbles are a round shape? To find out, I think we need to take an even closer look. When we blow a bubble using bubble mixture, it makes a round shape made of bubble film. The bubble film has three layers. A thin layer of water sandwiched between two layers of soap. Inside the soap layers are millions of soap molecules. Each soap molecule has two parts, a head that likes water and a tail that doesn't like water. The heads of the soap molecules push towards the water while the tails pull away from the water. The pulling and pushing makes the mixture stretchy enough to blow bubbles with. So when we blow air through the bubble wand, the mixture stretches out. At first it's wobbly, but because the soap molecules are pushing and pulling in every direction, the bubble quickly makes the tightest shape it can around the air inside, making a sphere-shaped bubble. Bubbles are so interesting, aren't they? They're made because of the way water and soap work when they're put together. But to help us understand this, we need to know that water has something called surface tension. Can you see the top of the water just here? It almost looks like it's got a kind of skin on the top, doesn't it? And that's because every droplet of water is made up of millions of tiny water molecules. And those water molecules like to cling together really tightly. And it's because of the way they cling together that makes that skin. And that's what we call surface tension. I can show you surface tension if I use a paper clip just here. Paper clips are made of metal, so they're heavy. So you might think that a paper clip would sink if we put it in water. But can you see? The paper clip is floating. And that's because of all those water molecules that are clinging together really tightly, making surface tension, which is stopping the paper clip from sinking to the bottom. Now watch what happens when I put a little bit of soap onto the top of the water. Did you see the paper clip sink to the bottom? That's because of the way soap and water act when they're mixed together. All of those soap molecules work really hard to pull the water molecules apart, and that makes the mixture more stretchy. Stretchy enough for the paper clip to sink to the bottom. But how does surface tension affect bubbles in the air? <laughs> Can you see that the bubbles pop as soon as I try to touch them? That's because when we touch a bubble with our dry hands, we break the bubble's surface tension. Our hands have a little bit of oil in them and that keeps them nice and soft, but soap loves oil. That's why we use it to clean dirty, oily dishes. So when a soap bubble lands on our oily hands, those soap molecules try to take the oil away, but this bursts the bubble. So what can I use to try and help me catch a bubble without it bursting? I'm going to use a glove. Now let's see what happens. Whoa! The glove is stopping the soapy bubble mixing with the oil on my hands, 
which means I can catch the bubble and even bounce it.